Psalm 90 is the appointed psalm for the last day of the year. It is printed in your service folder. Lord, you have been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were born, before you gave birth to the earth and the world, from eternity to eternity, you are God. You grind people to dust, and you say, Return, children of Adam, for a thousand years in your sight are like a day, like yesterday that has gone by, or like a watch in the night. You sweep them away like a flood. They are like sleep in the morning, like grass which changes quickly. In the morning it sprouts and grows. By evening it is cut down and it withers. Surely we are consumed by your anger, and by your wrath we are terrified. You have laid out our guilty deeds in front of you. Our hidden sins are revealed in the light of your face. For all our days pass away under your fury. We finish our years like a sigh. The days of our lives add up to 70 years or 80 years if we are strong. Yet the best of them are trouble and sorrow, for they disappear quickly and we fly away. Who can understand the power of your anger? But your fury is consistent with the fear that is owed to you. Teach us to number our days in such a way that we bring a heart of wisdom. Turn, O Lord, how long? Change your mind toward your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your mercy so that we may sing for joy and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us for as many years as we have seen trouble. Let your deeds be seen by your servants and your majesty by their children. May the kindness of the Lord our God rest upon us. Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. The word of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. This psalm, Psalm 90, appears in the scriptures under the heading, A Prayer of Moses, the Man of God. Moses prayed the words of Psalm 90 out of experience. He lived exactly what he was praying. You know that Moses led the children of Israel up out of captivity in Egypt. He led them toward the promised land, and on the way, the children of Israel rebelled against God. And so God said, fine. Nobody over the age of 20 is going to enter the promised land because you have rebelled against me. You've not listened to my word. You have been a stiff-necked and rebellious people. And what that meant is that the children of Israel were sentenced to wander for 40 years in the wilderness. And you can imagine Moses watching as the people that he had led across the Red Sea, that he had led out of captivity in Egypt, one by one, by one, they died in the desert. Every single one over the span of 40 years. No wonder, Moses says, surely we are consumed by your anger and by your wrath we are terrified. For all our days pass away under your fury. We finish our years like a sigh. The days of our lives add up to 70 years or 80 years if we're strong, yet the best of them are trouble and sorrow for they disappear quickly, and we fly away. Even Moses himself was not permitted to enter the promised land because of his sin against God. So tonight we flip the calendar and we go to a new year. That means a lot of things. It means that you're a year older. I hope it means that you're a year wiser, although that might not apply to all of us. It means that some of our loved ones who were with us at this time last year are with us no longer. And it means that we look forward to a new year with all of its opportunities, with all of its new opportunities for service. So with what attitude will you enter 2024? I'm going to give you three options tonight, and I hope that you'll see by the time we're finished this evening that really only one option is one that you want to pursue. The first option that you can pursue as you enter the year 2024 is you can go into the new year 
with denial. You're a year older, don't think about that. People are gone, don't stop and think about that. Don't think about the way the year has gone. Don't think about serious things. Don't think about eternal things. Don't think about the shortness of life in relation to the immensity of eternity. Just put it all aside. Don't think about that stuff. Just live for the now. Live from moment to moment. Live from event, from weekend to weekend in your life. From grocery store trip to grocery store trip. From travel experience to travel experience. From entertainment venue to entertainment venue. Immerse yourself in your hobbies. Keep yourself busy. Keep your mind occupied. Anything to keep you from thinking about things that are serious and eternal. Don't think about God. Don't think about eternity. Just live in the moment. That's denial. And as you know, most people in the world go through life that way. They don't want to think about those things. They don't want to think about knowing who God is, learning about their Savior, finding out that God's Son, Jesus Christ, became our Savior, took on human flesh so that he could be our brother. They don't want to think about what's going to happen when they die and when they meet God because well, it's just better not to think about those things. That's denial. So what we're going to do is we're going to make New Year's Eve a big boozy party. We're going to get high. We're going to get drunk. We're going to do everything that we can to live in the moment in, in the oblivion. Maybe we'll look back on 2023 and we will congratulate ourselves on how much money we made, how much success we've enjoyed. Or maybe we'll just think, I made it through the end of another year. I lived. I survived. Anything but turning your heart to wisdom. That's completely off the radar. Now you might think that I'm only talking about your unchurched neighbor or your unchurched friend or co-worker, but the fact is, is that you and I, even as Christians, we can still struggle with denial. I sometimes wonder why more Christians have not completed their will, their last will and testament. Now, granted, doing a will, it costs some money. You might have to engage an attorney, so maybe that's off-putting. Maybe it's just something that keeps getting pushed to the back burner, and we just kind of never get around to it. You know, there's always tomorrow. Maybe we're actually looking forward to making life miserable for our heirs so that when we pass, they have to sort the whole mess out, and we just don't care. Or, maybe we just don't want to think about it. Because the whole prospect of thinking about the end of our life and the fact that our time on earth is short is just something that we don't want to think about. That is denial. I wonder sometimes why more of our church members at Emmanuel don't ask for that form that we keep in the church office that lets you plan your own funeral. That's right. Do you know what a gift it is when the people who are trying to plan your funeral service know exactly what hymns you chose for the service and what scripture meanings or scripture readings were meaningful and important to you? Do you know what a blessing that is to the people who are planning your service? Now, maybe you didn't even know that that was an option. Maybe you didn't even know that we have that form in the church office. And again, maybe it's one of those things that you might get around to one of these days, but you know there's always tomorrow. Keep pushing it off. But then again, maybe you haven't gone down, down that route, route of thinking about your Christian funeral and making that gift to your heirs because you don't want to think about it. That's denial. Now, is it a law of God that you have to have a will? Of course not. Is it a law of God that you have to fill out the little church form? Absolutely not. But if we are pushing it off and we're not wanting to think about those things because we are in denial, then it's time for us to repent of the sin of denial. And by the way, if you do have your will done and you do have your little form filled out in the church office, then you need to be with me and repent of your sin of pride. 
for thinking that you've got it all together. Either way, we greet the end of the year with repentance. Things to reflect upon. Now, there's a reason why so many people live in denial, because the alternative is downright terrifying. And that's option number two, is to enter 2024 in complete, utter, hopeless despair. Because when you do not know that Jesus Christ is your Savior from sin, when you do not know that the Son of God bled and died on a cross to forgive you completely so that you stand right with God, when you do not know and you do not trust that God, your Savior, is preparing a place for you in heaven, then the alternative is terrifying. And there is no hope. There is only despair. Then your life becomes a grind, a step-by-step -step morbid trudge through life as you get closer and closer and closer to the day when the doctor tells you that you have cancer and that your time on earth is limited. When you get to the end of your 70 or 80 years, if you have the strength and you realize your shelf life is about to expire and there is no hope. Better go back to denial. Just don't think about those things. That is the pathetic, wretched existence that so many people in this world are going through because they don't know the beautiful truth of what God has done for us to save us from our sins. They don't want to think about what it's going to be like when they finally meet their maker in the judgment. And as they go through life, the sad thing is that when they lose a loved one, even if you have some vague notion that everybody goes to a better place, there is no hope of any kind of reunion in the future. There is no hope that you will ever see that person again. That's tragic. That is despair. And that is no way to enter the new year. So, I hope that option one and option two are not even anything that you're thinking about. Denial and despair have no place in the heart of a Christian. So let's look at how Moses greeted each day as he prayed Psalm 90. He said, Satisfy us in the morning with your mercy, O Lord, so that we may sing for joy and be glad all of our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us, for as many years as we have seen trouble. May the kindness of the Lord our God rest upon us Establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. The third option for us to pursue as we enter 2024 is to enter the new year with joy. Because you know where you stand with God. You know that Jesus Christ was born in a manger in Bethlehem and that he came to bear your sins and to carry your sorrows, to die your death, to suffer your hell, to rise again victorious on the third day of Easter so that for you and for me, death is a powerless form. Its power has been destroyed. Satan has been crushed. You enter the new year with joy because you are a child of God. You are a son or a daughter of the Most High. You have been washed you have been redeemed, you have been cleansed, you have been filled with the Holy Spirit, you have give, been given meaning and purpose and a new identity in this world, a new purpose in life. Every single day that you live is a day that you live with intent. It is a day that you live for God. You know exactly where you're going. You know that every single day brings you closer to that blessed moment when you will be Relieved from all of your stress, all of your anxieties, all of your worries, all of your sleepless nights, all of your aches and your pains, all of your tribulations, all of your deadlines, all of the pressure that other people put on you, you will rest from your labors in that blessed moment when the angels will carry your soul to Jesus' side. And when that moment is going to come, I don't know, you don't know, but I know that it is one day, one year closer than it was last time we celebrated New Year's. We are getting closer and closer to that blessed moment when we are going to be relieved from all of the things that we suffer in this world 
and we are going to be taken to the place that Jesus Christ himself has prepared for us, that he has bought for us with his own blood. And because we know these things and we trust in God our Savior, we have the absolute confidence that as we go through each day, we greet each morning with a smile, with the sunshine that God again pours down upon his creation. We live each day under the grace and the forgiveness of God. We know that we are loved and cared for, and that is our trust and our confidence every single joyful day that we go through life on this earth until finally God takes us through this brief life to eternity. That's how you enter the, 20, the new year 2024 with joy. I never met my grandmother on my mom's side. She died in 1941. I didn't come around for a couple more decades. She died at the tender age of 31. When she went in for an operating procedure, she died on the operating table. That means that my mom, who was six years old, old at the time, was raised by her father, a single parent. I was there in 1981 when my father's dad, my grandpa, his grave was lowered, or his casket was lowered into the grave up in Amherst, Wisconsin. I was there in 1987 down at South Park in Tucson when my other grandpa was lowered into the grave. You know, I'm kind of looking forward to having a nice reunion with them one of these days. I'm kind of looking forward to the day when in the resurrection we will be raised to life again and we will be glorified with Jesus and we will have the chance to, to reminisce and talk and to celebrate Jesus' victory for all eternity. Kind of looking forward to talking with the Apostle Paul. I've got a few questions that I'd like to ask him. And I'd kind of like to ask Moses a few things. And I expect that in heaven the line is probably going to be pretty long. But hey, we've got all eternity, so what's the worry? The point is, is that you and I as Christians, we go through this life with joy and with hope because we're looking forward to not only the bliss of of the life of the world to come and an eternal kingdom with Jesus and his kingdom will have no end. But we're looking forward to a blessed reunion with all who have gone before us in the faith and we will be with our Lord and we will be together as the family of God forever and forever and forever. They say that you cannot really learn how to live until you know how to die. And once you know how to die, then you can really begin to live. Because of what Jesus has done for us, forgiving us our sins, preparing us for eternity, we know that death has no sting. It's just asleep until we awaken in the resurrection. And because of that, we can live each day. And I mean really live each day with joy with the abundant, the exuberant joy that God actually prepared for his children to experience. Somebody has said that the word joy is an acronym that stands for Jesus, others, and you, in that order. And that's a really good way to think about living with joy. Put Jesus first. When Jesus, your Savior, is the center of your life, the center of your heart, the object of your love and your affection, when he walks with you every step of the way and Jesus is first in your life, that is a life of joy. When you put others first, when the purpose of your life is to serve and to give of yourself and to put others ahead of your own wants and your own pleasures and needs, that is a life of joy. And when you put yourself last, because you know that God's got it all under control, you are safe and secure in God's care, God is not going to let anything happen to you, you're not going to come out on the short end of the stick in the big picture, finally God is going to work out all things for your good because 
he loved you and he gave his life for you. When you have that confidence and you can put yourself last behind Jesus and others, that's a life of joy. There's no need for us to enter the new year with denial. We can embrace reality because we know that finally when our brief time on this earth is done, we get to be with Jesus. And there is no need for despair because God has filled us with hope and the joy of forgiveness and the promise of salvation. So enter the new year with a spring in your step and may the Lord flood your heart with New Year's joy. Amen.